Welcome back to another video. On Wednesday, we went over this iPad. It wasn't powering on, and we were able to look through it together and track down a short that led us to an issue with the PMIC. I've got the PMIC in today, so I'm gonna show you how we replace it, and we're gonna fix up this iPad so it can continue to be used. Let's get into the video. All right, so let's take the motherboard out so that we can work on it. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is take out the screws on the charge port, on the battery, and the brackets up at the top, just like that. And we can disconnect all of the coax cables and we'll peel them away. Then we'll make sure all of the flex cables are disconnected from the board. And now I'm gonna add some isopropyl alcohol to the charge port flex and along the edge of the motherboard to help kind of loosen that adhesive so that it comes up. Along with up at the top on this flex cable, it goes over here and then up by the power button and camera. And I'm just gonna carefully pry up the flex cable for the charge port and we'll peel it up and we'll slowly side under the board and start to give it a little bit of flex while adding more isopropyl alcohol. You could also put a heat plate on the back if you want to help with this, but I don't mind taking an extra 10 seconds to let it kind of do its thing with the alcohol without heat. And then the board will start to come up. And then when you get to the top, you just gotta make sure we don't tear this flex off. And this in, this area is kind of annoyingly adhered. So take your time. All right, the board just popped out. I'm gonna slowly walk under this flex cable all the way over, add some alcohol up here. And then I'm gonna take my tweezers and I'm gonna carefully insert it under this tiny little surface and slowly lift and let the alcohol let the adhesive go. And eventually it'll pop away from that copper sticker and then the whole board will come out. Now let's go take a closer look under the microscope at how to replace the PMIC. All right, so we've got here the PMIC. As you can see, this is the area we worked on before where we found the shorted capacitor here. And then also this burn mark in the PMIC which is why we're replacing it today. And one of the hard parts about this particular IC is there's not a whole lot of clearance between the edge of the chip and the capacitors, which means installing it is really easy because it's hard to get it misaligned, but removing it is a little bit more tricky just due to its proximity to the surrounding components, which means things can go terribly wrong very quickly when we get up to soldering temperatures if we start to move components. <clears throat> Got a little shield here that's gonna shield the CPU. We're gonna kinda get it semi-close to the edge here. This has a shield down here, so it's fairly well protected from direct heat. We're gonna come in with our hot air, and we're going to heat up the PMIC, and we'll remove it. I'm gonna add a little bit of flux. All right, so it looks like I accidentally pushed off a little capacitor down here. And we'll pull off the IC. We'll address those in a second. I'm gonna take some 138 solder paste and deposit it down and then take an iron. I'm gonna go around and we're gonna mix this 138 with any of the factory solder. And we're gonna be as thorough as we can to kind of go around without accidentally bridging uh, any of the uh, surrounding capacitors. I really wanna mix in. Let's get some more flux on this. Really want to make it an easy job for me to wick up the uh, all of the pads. So I'm just going to go around the border. That's really where a lot of the issues can occur. And I'm going to drag that solder around, picking up the factory solder. We'll flip it around. We're going to do the same thing. In this case, it's like a, a one step backward, two step forward process where you're adding more solder and then taking away twice as much as you add. We'll do this all the way around. No need to rush. One last side that I want to deal with, this one, and then we'll be good to wick it off and install our new PMIC. Now we'll add some flux and get out our wick and carefully move up towards the edge. All right, I'm satisfied with that corner, so we'll rotate again. A lot of this is coming comes down to wanting to be 
in the most comfortable position for yourself to do the work. All right, and so we'll go up into the corner, suck up all of the solder, move down the side, and I'm satisfied with that corner. So I'll rotate it again, go up into this corner, same thing, and then last corner, go up into that corner, and we'll suck up all of the solder. I'm gonna add a little bit of low melt to the sides of the capacitor here that has uh, come out of alignment. This will help it melt easier when I go to heat it up so that it wants to snap back into place. <clears throat> All right, time to clean up. So we're gonna add some isopropyl alcohol and I'm just gonna clean up all of the flux and then we'll clean it off really nicely, just like that. I'm gonna go back and add some flux. We're gonna heat it up and move it around, getting it nice and thin everywhere. All right, so the chip that we pulled is the 343S00422. So here we've got our new chip, it's the 343S00422. Let's take a look at the chip and make sure we're happy with the solder balls. Now there are a few chips that I will reball. This isn't one of them because I like the temperature of the factory solder for this component just because I know how much heat it's gonna be taking. So looking at those solder balls, they look like they're in good shape. So what we'll do is add some flux to this as well. Keep those, that solder nice and shiny. Add a bit of flux to it. Might be a little too much, but we'll let the heat spread out. We'll let uh, some of this get sucked up by the cloth. There we go. Now I'm happy with that little coating of flux on there. All right, we'll take our chip, we'll set it down. And if you remember, the dot was where the burn mark was there. So it's easy to line up this one. You can see the dot here in this top corner. So we'll spin this guy around drop him into place, nudge him until he's where we like him. All right, and I like the placement there. The spacing on all sides looks really, really good. We got three tasks to do. One, solder on this IC and move this cap and that cap back into place. We're gonna try to do this all at the same time. Now, I think the hardest one's gonna be the little capacitor here. All right, so I'm almost got it hot enough. There we go. Got those two capacitors back in, and I'm gonna come here. You probably couldn't see that. <laughs> Dang it. Got the capacitors back in, and we're gonna come in on the side here, and we're gonna see if we can nudge. We'll give it a little nudge like that. That way we know it's nice and sturdy. Let this board cool down. As you can see, we accomplished what we needed to. The, the caps are back in place. Nothing else has slid out of place. No bridging. We snapped the IC perfectly. So, Let's just let this cool down, and then we'll come in with some isopropyl alcohol now that it's a little cooler, and we'll clean up whatever flux we can. Not gonna get all of it, obviously, and that's okay. And I'm extremely curious what I get for readings on the multimeter, because I was still getting some odd readings on surrounding areas. So here I'm getting 0.3, okay? This is the line that was, let me get this back into focus. All right, so here is the line that was shorted before. I'm now getting 0.3 on that, that's good. This line was showing some issues. So we got ground on this side, and now we've got 0.3. This was also reading uh, uh, high. All right, a lot of those lines I was having issues with before are now testing good. Let's go plug this in uh, back into the iPad and let's see if we can get a different result. All right, so we've got a new PMIC installed. Let's go ahead and put this back inside the frame. I'll take a piece of plastic. I'm gonna protect the battery right there. Okay, we'll install the board by lining up the top. We'll line up where the battery goes. I'm gonna push the board down so it stops moving. And I'm gonna put the charge port back in. And we're gonna put in at least the bottom screws for now, just for testing so we can plug in a charger. And I'm gonna connect up a bunch of the stuff up top. All right, I've got everything but the coax cable and the speaker connected at the top. And same at the bottom, we've got the charge port installed, but not the other stuff. And now let's connect up the display and we'll connect up the digitizers. And now that those are connected, we'll go ahead and pull out the battery protector and put back its screw. And now let's plug it in and hope for life. Oh, we saw a flicker and there we go. We've got the battery logo. So the battery was really dead, but we do now have life. It is charging. If I 
unplug this. It says plug me in only very quickly. So let's give this a chance to charge up and we will test it and make sure everything's working. All right, so we're charging 1%, touch works. All we need to see now is this go up above 1% and we know that we are charging properly. One thing I also wanna just double check just because it was having charging issues. Let's flip this around, make sure we get our charging symbol back. And we do. All I need to do is see it go above 1% and we are done. We just need to put back all the brackets, connect everything up, and uh, yeah. All right, so it's been a couple minutes and we are at 2%. That's uh, about right for a dead iPad. I am happy with that. That means that this is in fact charging. There are no other issues with it. I'll spare you closing it up. And this iPad is basically done. And we'll go ahead and turn it off. All right, so now we have it all fixed. We are charging once again, and it's all back together. Luckily, this one was fairly straightforward. Being able to actually visually see an issue with the PMIC. Now, in testing around it, I came, I was coming up with some very interesting readings. After replacing the PMIC, those readings came back to what I, from experience, find to be normal. I really wish that the schematics were available so that I could actually understand what values I was looking for it instead of just saying, oh, that feels right right now, or that seems to be a little high, it seems to be a little off. If I had a, another logic board to compare to, it would have been much simpler. That being said, hopefully this two-part video has helped you understand how straightforward or how tedious it can be to track down issues, whether it's a short on a capacitor or inside of an integrated circuit, and some of the techniques to replacing it as well. If there's anything that you'd like to see in a future video, let me know in the comments below. Thanks a ton for watching. We'll see you in the next video.